The aim of this video is to explain the process for collecting plasma and serum samples for the Amniotic Fluid Embolism Foundation. Samples of blood that were obtained before the patient was diagnosed with Amniotic Fluid Embolism Syndrome are valuable for discovering biomarkers of patients at risk. These blood samples are typically those obtained upon admission to labor and delivery, such as a lavender top tube, generally used to obtain complete white blood cell counts, hemoglobin, and hematocrit, as well as a red top tube, which is generally collected for blood type and cross-matching. Hospital laboratories typically keep these samples for several hours or days after the initial laboratory tests are performed. If serial samples from multiple time points are available for the patient, these can be of great value and should be included. Plasma can be obtained from the lavender top tubes, which contain EDTA as an anticoagulant. Serum can be obtained from the red top tubes, which do not contain any anticoagulant. We would like to request that the laboratory personnel separate the samples of plasma and serum from the lavender and red top tubes and ship them to the perinatology research branch. A lavender top tube of blood contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. These tubes need to be centrifuged to accomplish separation. Centrifugation is done by laboratory personnel at room temperature and at a minimum of 500 G for 10 minutes. When centrifuging the lavender top tubes, be sure that tubes of fluids of equal weight are placed in the centrifuge opposite the lavender top tubes to serve as a balance. If the centrifuge shakes when running, then the tubes are not balanced and the volumes and weights of the balanced fluids should be adjusted accordingly. Ideally, the break of the centrifuge should be off in order to avoid disruption of platelets. Allow the centrifuge to slow and come to a complete stop before opening the lid of the centrifuge. Carefully remove the lavender top tubes so that the solutions do not mix. Three layers of blood components will be visible. Plasma, which is the yellow fluid on the top, the buffy coat or white blood cells, and the red blood cells. The two options for separating plasma or serum from other blood components are transfer pipettes or micro pipettes. The plasma can be separated from the other blood components using pipettes into one milliliter units and placed within plastic polypropylene tubes. Care should be taken that white blood cells in the buffy coat and red blood cells are not disturbed. The closer you get to the buffy coat layer, the more careful you will need to be to avoid disturbing it. Repeat this procedure until no plasma remains. The procedure with the red top tubes is the same. The only difference is that serum will be extracted rather than plasma. Centrifugation is again done at room temperature at a minimum of 500 G for 10 minutes. Serum, which is the yellow fluid layer at the top of the tube, will be distinct from the blood clot. Serum can be separated from the blood clot using pipettes into one milliliter units and placed into plastic tubes. Care should be taken not to disturb the clotted portion of blood within the red top tube. Tubes containing plasma or serum should be labeled with the patient ID number, the date and time at which the sample was obtained, and the sample type. This information can either be written on the tubes with a permanent marker or provided on a label. The tube should then be placed into a tube rack for freezing in a standard laboratory freezer at minus 20 degrees Celsius until they are shipped to the perinatology research branch.